But it, but it says that he had a flashlight, and the fire burned over three months, I think, or close to three months. I don't know how exact I am. But they say he had a flashlight, and he was, he was extending his hand down as far as he could to see if he could see something. And something reached out and grabbed him. And he says in his testimony, in his fear, he wanted to let go of the flashlight and back away. But he held on to the flashlight. And someone was there. And they held on to him. And they were pulling with such desperation that he felt as if he was going in. And he grabbed on to someone else. And they 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 began to pull. Someone go in there and disconnect the battery to whatever that is that's ringing. And they began to pull. And what I want to share with you is that there's a time for everything. There's a time for war. And, 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 you know, and, and our president may go do what he needs to do in Iraq. There's a time for anger and hate. And many people aren't done yet with their hate. They're not done, Jackie. They still want to hate, you know what I mean? And people who own 7-Elevens and those people of color and Middle Eastern people and those not real Americans that just come here for the money and there's still all that hate and they want to hate. But you know, if you resent long enough, you'll become cynical. Then you'll hate your wife and you'll hate your children and you'll hate the police officers and you'll hate these people and you'll hate those people and you'll hate your own family and then our children will come up with the same disease of hating, holding on to resentment and turning it into hate. So what time is it now? If there's a a time for everything, a season for all these things, what time is it now as we take part in remembering these people? You see, our prayer must be focused as a body of believers. Our prayer needs to be focused at, Lord, what do you want from us now? Let me share with you what the Lord has shown me. I said, why, God, first of all, How do I answer the big question, why did this happen? Why this senseless tragedy? Why this mass murder? Why did this happen? I began to read the word of God and began to realize that God gives us volition, the power to choose, to make choices. And God begins to speak by his spirit into our hearts saying, I didn't do that, but I gave you the power to choose. And in your power to choose, man does evil things to one another. I, God, did not slam two planes into the tower. I, God, did not slam a plane into the Pentagon. I, God, did not slam a plane into western Pennsylvania. These were choices that were made by people who had the will to make a decision. And today we still have that decision. Isn't it wonderful that God didn't make us robots? If he's so omniscient, so omnipotent, so omnipresent, all-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere present. Why couldn't he just have made us puppets and make us walk straight and circumspect, be nice, treat each other by the golden rule, and then just wait for him? Because it would not be like him. He made us in his image, the power to feel, the power to choose, and the power to think. And that's a wonderful thing because it gives us, especially in America, the ability to become whatever we can dream as long as we're willing to work for it and to aspire to it. So what season is it now? Church, one year anniversary today. Rather than seeing the photograph of the plane slamming in again and slamming in again and slamming in again and seeing the tower mushroom again and again like I did last year, I saw people crying. I saw people holding hands. I saw people shedding tears. I saw people holding pictures. I saw people holding children. I saw people hugging people they didn't know well. And it was clear that it's a time to heal. It's a time to heal. Now, I didn't say it's a time to go to sleep on the enemy. Just that it's a time to heal from this blow so that we can make ourselves strong and prepare for whatever else is coming towards us. Are you with me? A time to heal. There's still deep pain. There's still sorrow. There's still hate. There's still racism. There's still prejudice. Let's lock the borders of our country. Let's not let anyone in. I mean, enough is enough already. But then it wouldn't be America, would it? I mean, it really wouldn't be America. Oh, we Hispanics? 
people of color. We've been waiting a long time for someone to come up and get on the rung beneath us. Now, come on now. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I mean, we've been waiting a long time. Send me somebody, a middle age, good, you know, good. I, I'll hate an Arab. At least it's not about black and it's not about Puerto Rican anymore, you know. Let me, let me, finally somebody else is a rung be, uh, below. And the danger is that, is that we can become cynical and begin to hate them the way we were hated. Which means nothing changed. We truly have become Americans. Or we can become a different breed of American. And we can say it's a time to heal now. It's time to heal. This is a bad blow. It's a bad shot in the belly. Real bad. But it's time to heal. Amen? It's time to heal. The second thing is that it's a time to love. It's a time to love our neighbors, folks. It's a time to love our civil servants. It's a time to understand. You know, you know I, I, I grew up in North Philly, and hey, listen, I had no great love for police officers. <laughs> My daughter is a Camden cop now. My son-in-law is a Camden police officer. My brother-in-law is a homicide detective in Patterson, New Jersey. Seems that my family picked the worst places to be a police officer. I say, all I do is pray, say, please keep her safe. Wear your, um, just, just wear like, man, I mean, wear a bulletproof vest like over your body. You know, just, just like leave two holes for your nose. You know, just, just, I don't know, because of fear, you know. But it's a time to love. I, I, I never seen so many, I go get my coffee at 7-Eleven every morning and there's this, very obviously an Arab uh, looking person, I don't know exactly, but he's a Syrian or something. And, and I'd never seen him try to talk so much English that then they say, hi, how you doing? America's good, you know, just yes, hey, I have flags for everybody. I give them free sometimes, people don't have money, you know what I mean? He's just anything, just, just please don't hate me. I mean, you follow me? Just please don't, please don't hate me. I, I didn't do this, he's trying to say. I didn't do this, I, I, I wanted to be here. I came here because I wanted to. And folks, I think it's a time for us as a community, as a body of people, of believers, on your job, to start showing love again, man. Start trusting again. Don't be cynical. There's going to be people of different color. We more than anybody ought to know what an underdog feels like. Don't become that same thing that we hated so much. Let's become people of integrity and begin to love again. Can you say amen if you're in agreement with that? The next thing is, is that it's a time to forgive. And I, I didn't think that that one would go over easy. I thought you'd, I'd, I'd hear like, not yet, you know, not till the planes hit Iraq. You know, we're not forgiving, you know. And, 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 and folks, I have my political views, you know, and, and I was in the Marine Corps and I remember hearing stuff like this, nothing like the smell of napalm in the morning, you know, and, and, and that stuff, you know. And, 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 and folks, it all sounds good, but, you know, those are decisions that as we pray our president and they're going to make our generals and those chief of staffs are going to make. And we just need to pray that they will do whatever they need to do with wisdom. But for us, it needs to be a time to forgive. Because if we don't forgive, we'll become hateful and spiteful. And we'll become nothing better than the KKK and every other racist prejudice group that's out there, right or wrong. That's, that is what we'll become. And when that bitterness gets in you, it'll, it's going to come out in everything in your community. It's a time to forgive. Anyone who wants to ever cross that bridge to forgiveness must be willing to let somebody come across that bridge the other way. When you don't forgive, you essentially tear that bridge down and you yourself cannot cross and navigate that bridge. You following me? It's a time to remember. They didn't realize it and I didn't realize what they were going to sing about. But my text there was time to to remember that God is going to turn some beauty out of those ashes. I love I that, and I didn't see what they were going to do, but I mean, learn. Are we learning anything? Is America learning anything? See, if we didn't learn anything, it's not worth it. Then we're destined to repeat this mistake, and we will suffer again. But after Oklahoma, after the Columbines, and after this, I think we're changing our attitude. 
Our door has been able to swing open too freely. And we're beginning to look at things a little bit differently, change our attitude, our perspective. There was a video about people that said that what they fear most is that they fear death. They're scared. But it's changing our perspective on things. It's a time to remember. Folks, remember those people. Listen to me. Something beautiful happened that day. I know it's probably the wrong night, but I got to mention it. Something beautiful happened that day. I started going into the figurine shops too. We we're trying to find you one. But, but I, I just sold out and not available. They're just not around. But, but we finally got our heroes back, man. Right. See, anybody a little bit older, I'm 46 now, but just a little bit. I remember cops, when they used to walk you across the uh, street, a police officer would walk you across. They'd walk by and pat you on the head, you know, and tell you, it's time to get home. I'm sure you shouldn't be out there. I know that's not a cigarette I saw you with, right? I mean, I remember that stuff, right? And then our world got cynical and drug involved in violence and everything, and now everything is tense. But when this happened, man, I saw little kids holding on to cops' hands again. I saw them waving at fire trucks. I saw these figurines and statues back in the stores. They were on sale again. We had our heroes back, our local heroes, those men and women that made us proud and made us feel safe from fire and from violence. We need to remember that. God is going to bring some beauty out of these ashes. He's going to have to do that in you and me. See, our memory now, is our attitude going to change? Is our attitude going to change towards people? Are we going to be a little bit more humble, a little bit more kind? Are we going to remember that life can be taken like that? God's word says in the book of James, like a vapor, a moment in time, it could be gone. Maybe it's time to respect our life a little bit more. Maybe it's time to redeem the time. Say, I'm going to get educated. I'm going to love my kids a little bit more. I'm going to, uh, that, that room that we don't use anymore. You know the room I'm talking about. Everybody have one? You know the room I'm talking about in the house that nobody uses anymore? You know the room. You know, it's the room. It's got, it's got a china set, a table and chairs around it. Anybody know the room I mean that we don't use anymore? Nobody sits for dinner anymore, right? I mean, we should put a pool table in there, ping pong, something, a Nintendo, because we don't... But maybe it's time to get back to that and to remember how wonderful family is. If any one of those people, thousand, over 3,000 people in all, in all the areas that... If, if any one of their loved ones could say one thing, they would say, I wish I had him back for a minute. I wish I could have dinner with him or her for one minute. One minute. I wish I could have one meal to sit across and finally listen to this person just, just for a minute. And they're remembering. Today, they're remembering all over the world. They're, they're hurting and they're trying to grab a memory. And some are scared and they're a little older and they're forgetting the look of the face. And they're trying to find that picture and remember that face because they don't want to let that memory go. We need to remember tonight that people are trying to remember. We need to remember that this happened in our country and we need to get some beauty out of these ashes. We need to get something sweet. If we're learning, I won't go too much longer, but I believe it's a time for America to put God first again. I believe it's very clearly a time that we need to put God first again. I mean, it's time for us in our community, man. Start sparking up, man. Start getting your people to church. They don't have to come here. Go somewhere. Just, just get that family unit squared away again. And that's what's going to change our city around here. God must be first again. Are you with me? It's also a time to look back and reflect. Just to think of all the hurt, of all the pain, of all the sorrow, of all the loneliness, Think of Stephen Ann. Think of people in the church here that have lost someone. And I think of how I see them from year to year. And I think, boy, they're doing better. And I see them alone sometimes and they're crying. I know what they're thinking about. I know what you're thinking about, Marge, about your sisters. I know what you're thinking about. You know, you just another one of those times you say, man, I'm, it's a time to reflect. It's a time to do some introspection and say, man, I need to check my heart out. Am I wasting my life filled with anxiety, majoring on all the minor things that mean nothing? Come on, ask yourself that. I mean, am I, all that's important to me is all this little stuff that means nothing? It's time to start focusing and saying, Lord, I want to reflect. I want to focus on things that matter. 
on things that are going to matter in my relationships with people. That's what this is about. My whole job, my full-time job, pastor, they call me that. I'm a relationship expert. I try to keep you right with God. That's my full-time job, and they pay me for that. Cool, right? Well, it's a time to respond. Many people that react. Last night, we heard a lesson. They said a wonderful thing, and they mentioned how, what is the difference between a reaction and a response? I said very clearly, yeah, look at our police force. I think of a Lieutenant Warg, and, 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 and they have a training academy. And what do they do? They train for things that may happen. Right? Why? Because if they got a 911 call that on 2nd and Ridge, there's four people with guns fighting it out, little kids are running around, and they react, they'll come out and there'll be an Amadou Diallo. <laughs> but if they respond and they've trained, see, if they have a plan, they respond. You see, cops, they never come out and say uh, they, they got a 911 call and they reacted. No. We got a 911 call and we're responding. Right. They've already got a plan. What's our plan? How are we going to respond now to this senseless tragedy? How has it changed your life? Has it changed your life with your kids, with your husband, with your wife, with your neighbor, with your education, with your home, with the way that you live, with your ethics? with your morality, with what you place high value on in your life, we should respond differently, folks. Our world changed last year on this day. It changed for all of us. We were never scared to fly on planes. I'd go to other countries and just, hey, by nature that I'm an American, I expected them to roll out a carpet for me. I mean it. I mean, I went to Paraguay, South America, and I expected, you know, I mean, there should be somebody here to meet me, you know, to just, just thank God I'm on your soil. Mm -hmm. And now when we go to another country, they might kill us mm -hmm. because of who you are. Right. America has spent all its life separating church from state. Mm -hmm. And Osama bin Laden just said, you can't do that. <laughs> what you believe in your God is what we're attacking. Amen. We will get you. You follow me? Amen. It's time to respond, not to react. A reaction will make you go on feelings. Hate, let's get them, bomb them, nuke them. But a response will say, what should we be doing? How should we change as families? Our civil servants and 9-11 were the greatest heroes. I want to know if you'd really agree with me. Our civil servants were the greatest heroes. I love the fact that one of the greatest heroes they made out of this whole thing was a fireman, right? Amen. And as I thought and I pondered, I thought, thank you, Lord. You made it too easy for me again. Amen. Because he is the greatest fireman. Amen. He is the greatest rescuer. Amen. He came down to rescue us from fire. Are you follow me? Amen. He is the greatest fireman. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you. For this time of remembrance, Lord. We need to reflect, to heal, to forgive, to remember, to put you first. And also, once again, we're faced with the ability to choose. And we must choose our response. We thank you, Father. In Christ's name, help us to respond appropriately to you. Amen. I'm going to ask if our ushers will come forward, and we would just want to have a moment of silence, and then we will be uh, letting you go, a moment of prayer, a moment of silence, and we're going to have a candlelight service now, and we're going to give you candles. I would ask that any young children, parents, do not let them hold those, as we don't want the firemen tonight to have to come rescue us. Okay? So, parents, you hold that, and there's a little holder for it, and, and uh, I will start it, and I will pass it first to a Lieutenant Warg, and then I'm going to have him pass it around and we will light each other's flame, okay? Excuse me for one moment as they pass them around.